Previously on The Bill. I wasn't with him when he died. Do you know what that makes me feel? All right, Des, that's enough. <laughs> OK, write down everything you can. I want this woman found. Special Constable Knowles was repeatedly stabbed in the neck. She's out there somewhere. DCI Meadows, Sean Hill. This is DCI Raptor from MIT. Oh, just a matter of in here. Go! To solve. I hope you got a decent solicitor. Danny, mate. Got that CD you wanted? What is it this time? Herbie Hancock? Clyde McFatter? It's just an excuse to not let any of us up here. Everything's been kept or shush. Look, I don't know anything, Des, so don't bother asking. I heard there was an operation this morning. Yeah, well, maybe they were trying to follow up a lead, yeah? On the car, I heard. It's not that hush hush, then. It's a name I'm after. Yeah, well, there's hundreds to take your pick. But there must be something you can give me. Yeah, yeah. Here's blondes that drive convertibles. Here's blondes that drive white cars that may or may not be convertibles. And here's blondes that may not even really be blonde. There must be one name that keeps on coming up. Yeah. Annika Rice, Ulrika Johnson, Jordan, Donna A. Oh, and one bloke who thinks it's Kim Basinger. Anything I can help you with? Satchmo's greatest debts. I'll leave that with you then, eh, Danny? I just thought of another one. Baird, mm. Charlie Parker. Think if you think of any other names, give us a shout. What'd you tell him? <laughs> Nothing up. I think he might knock up Ulrika Johnson. Not if I get there first. There he is. Well, tighter than a nun's promise. Right, who shot me? This is a murder investigation, Mr Kirkwood. You could be done for perverting the course of justice. Jake, it was Jake, weren't it? It's the car we're interested in. He never turned up for work this morning. I should have known. So where did he get the sub? Geezer comes in, wants silly money for it, says he's desperate, five grand cash. And you didn't question it, does he? Well, he gives me the keys, the logbook, and his driving licence, so I know it ain't me. <laughs> yeah, but you knew enough to have it respray, didn't you? Yeah, well, white cars are difficult for shift. I mean, a few stone chips and that, it made sense to paint it. Come on, Mr Kirkwood, we're not stupid. All right, all right. I thought it was too good to be true. But I thought it was like a gambling debt or a drug habit. And you'd no idea that the car we were looking for matches our description? No, not when I bought it. I mean, I might have read something in the paper since. Why don't you call us, then? Because I've invested five grand in that motor. A police officer was killed. Yeah, but you don't know it was that car, though, do you? Gov, looks like we found some spots of blood. Debbie? Have you got a moment? A bit busy. Promise I won't keep you. What? How's it going? How's what going? My personal life or the investigation? The investigation. Well, Tavener was good. He brought a pop with him. Look, you can't blame people for wanting to know. Debbie. Any more disturbances? I'm gonna have to make a complaint. All this secrecy isn't helping anyone. Leave the investigating to the grown-ups, eh? Blood spatters here across the top of the window. There between the window and the seal. Also on the interior door panel the seat and in the footwell. You satisfied now? 
And that's not all, Gov. In the boot, we found some hair samples and, get this, some small particles that we think may prove to be cocaine. <coughs> Sorry. We're going to need a description, Mr Kirkwood. Yeah, sure. We want to know what this Paul King looked like. How tall was he? His hair? What he was wearing? Yeah, all right. I'll get the picture. You the others think he is? There's no point getting angry. Yes. We've got a right to know what's happening. Yeah, but the thing is... we Look, Reg, out. I don't want to know the official line. Are they afraid we'll get to her first? Probably. Still, we've got one thing that they haven't got. And what's that? Nick, an eyewitness. He had uh, short, dark, slick back hair, those long, trendy sideburns. He was tallish, snappy dresser. Eyes? Two of them. I mean, when was the last time you looked at the colour of another fella's eyes? When was the last time you changed your calendar? This is two years out of date. I'm trying my best here. Look, the bloke has sold you the car. He must have driven here. So how did he get home? Red Golf. Come again? A Red Golf, I remember it. It was well knackered, bird driving. Blonde? I couldn't tell. But it was an A-Reg. Where our bloke whips out his axe and thwack chops Bert's head off. <laughs> like blood spurts everywhere. He boils up his friend's head, like the good witch doctor says, waits for the scum to cover the surface, lets it cool, then he smears his body with it. Next day, the rash is gone. Only he's got to know the name of this miraculous cure. The witch doctor turns to him and he says... Palomine lotion. <laughs> Anyone know any good blonde jokes? Yeah. Gov. Gov. Paul King, known but not wanted. He's got previous for ABH and possession of cannabis, but it was a long time ago. And his last known address, same as in the logbook, Rudkin Road. Well, it's looking less like a coincidence. Any associates? None listed. What about the A-registered golf? I mean, I know it's a long shot. No, we would need a lot more than that, Gov. I think we should get a warrant and pay Mr King a visit. So there he is. He's got a cat on one shoulder and a flamingo on the other. And the genie says you can have one wish for letting me out the bottle. So what did he wish for? I don't know. Oh, go on, what did he wish for? A there. beard with long legs. She's there. Are you sure? Going into the dress shop. What was she wearing? Black, black skirt, purple top, black jacket. There's a blonde woman just come in, dressed in black. Where What's is going she? going on? What are you doing? <gasps> hey! It's not her. Upstairs, Vic! Mr. King! Police! Mr. King! Get a bloody grip. Yeah, I thought it was her. You shouldn't have gone steaming in, dude. He said it was here. Yeah, but you didn't have to do that. seen by the delivery driver. Early afternoon. Canley Fields, right? Uh, right. You pulled on Bill Road? Yeah. She had it off east and was last seen on Spicer Lane. Yeah, point being? She must be local. Why? Last seen at Spicer Lane. She was coming back on herself. No more sightings after that. Well, maybe she was lost. Second point. Is she a good girl gone bad or a bad girl gone mad? You love your little sightings, don't you? If she's a good girl gone bad, we're gonna have trouble finding her. But if she's already in the mix, someone, somewhere, has an investment. What do you mean, an investment? She could be a dipper, but I doubt it. A lifter seems too down market. Car she's driving could indicate drugs or a high-class hooker. Yeah, maybe she's trying to put a con or something. Whatever it is, she answers to someone. 
But you're making a lot of assumptions, Des. The cop is dead. That's news. They'll be talking about it everywhere. Laughing and joking about the beard who chopped the pig. But how are we going to get them to talk to us? Derek Smith. Is it him? Difficult to say. There's not much of his face left and his ears caked in blood. <coughs> Gav, you're sneezing all over the evidence. Sorry. Well, looks like he was having a party. Other than the head wound, there's no outward signs or marks of violence. I suspect a professional hit, only... Professionals don't leave guns lying around. Well, we know what he was doing before he was blown away. Little Johnny's wearing a raincoat. Two corpses, one woman. This is out of order. No, Derek, the lift is out of order. You are in demand. No, I, I haven't done anything. Didn't man blow into the papers, though, did you? There's someone I'd like you to meet. <laughs> hello, Derek. So how long do you think it's been like that? My guess is it all happened on the same day. Well, in that case, it's not the bloke who sold the car to Kirkwood, is it? No. But if we can find out who he was, we can find the girl. And we have a name, at least. Neighbour says a single bloke lives here, but that his girlfriend often stops by. Description? Blonde. He last saw her five days ago. She arrived in a red car, didn't stop long, and had another bloke with her. Red golf. We've been looking for the wrong car. Fact is, Derek, we need your help. What can I do? You are of a fraternity. A brotherhood. What's he talking about? He goes like this sometimes. If you don't listen, he's liable to flip. It turns nasty. I'm being polite. Why not being polite? Impeccable manners. I'm freezing me fill bits here, lads. What I'm trying to say, Derek, is that you are a criminal. No, I've learnt my lesson now. <laughs> not yet, you haven't. Please don't hit me. Derek, do the man a courtesy and listen to what he has to say. You have a legitimate reason for wanting to know who stabbed Terry Knowles. It's been in the papers. Everybody knows you were there. She knows you were there. You can ask around. No. You can go to the places we can't go. You find out the rumours, the falsehoods, and the facts, and you report back to me, to us. My... Derek, you already know, don't you? Sarge, come in, Paul. I can't stay long because they'll be looking for me. But I just thought you could let the lads know that there's been a breakthrough. There's this bloke. He's called Artie Shanks, and he manages a place called Corrie Lives. I've heard of it. Well, you know where it is. It's Spicer Lane. Well, the rumour is, well, it was, that uh, he had this white Saab cabriolet for sale and he was asking silly money for it. The car that we pulled over. So it goes, yeah. Well, you hear these things, don't you? But she was some kind of psycho bitch, wasn't she? Well, there's also this... Uh, I have a name floating about, um, something King, he's a dealer. Drugs? Yeah, coke. It's beginning to match your theory. Uh, let's not get carried away here. Well, it seems, well, I don't know. It seems that he's disappeared, and Artie's got something to do with it. Yeah, disappeared as in permanently. No, but I can't believe it. I mean, I know Artie. He's not that kind of bloke. There's a girl, Derek. A girl has to come into it somewhere. That's just it, though. I know Artie. And he's a bandit. I know of the place. I know people who've been there, but as far as I know, Korolev's is quite a trendy venue for the Glitterati. Glitter what? Oh, media types, minor celebrities, journos, that sort of thing. What about Arthur Shanks? Well, I've heard of him, but only through a friend of a friend. I suppose we want a yarm up. How silly of me, then I must know him. Hey, you said you had some news, soldier. Yeah. Paul Riley tells me there's been a breakthrough. Well, I'm glad someone's on our side. They found the car. Artie Shanks is supposed to have flogged the car. That's not the name they have. Well, come on then. The name they have is Paul King. King? 
Tarek said there was a dealer called King. King turns out to be a corpse. So we all into something? See, according to Derek, the rumor is Artie Shanks had King bumped off. Paul Riley tells me that they're looking for a woman. The car they found, registered to Paul King, yeah? Yeah. King disappeared. Shanks flogs the car. The criminal flap put two and two together and make five. We should take this upstairs. No chance. Let Gofton take all the glory. I didn't think this was about the glory. It is to him. No, they wouldn't play ball with us. See, what happened to this bloke then, Sarge? Shot in the head, point blank range. I think we'd better pay Artie Shanks a visit. Get here before us. Is this some kind of men police harassment campaign? We're looking for Artie Shanks. That's not who your colleague was looking for. Absolutely. Well, hands up. You found me. Now, is anyone going to tell me what this is all about? Yeah. We heard that you moved into the second-hand car business. Really? Don't know why you'd hear that. Reg, why don't you take a look around, mate? White Saab convert. The guy who was just in here, he was looking for someone who drives a car like that. I think you might be mixing me up with him. Friend of Paul King's, were you? A guy with that name and with that kind of car did sometimes drink in here. Exclusive club. You have to be a member to get in, don't you? Your colleague just took the membership list. Did Paul King have a girlfriend? No. Oh, Artie. Bit quick off the mark there. What was her name? People are allowed to bring guests. But they have to sign them in, don't they? I just told you. The other guys got the list. But the girl we're looking for, you know well. Why else would you try to fraudulently sell a car for her? Why would you help her cover up two murders? I think we've got something. Her name is Cathy. Cathy Milligan. Also known as Catherine Clark, professional name. She's a lovely girl. She's a Tom. String of convictions going back five years. Just fell into bad company. After the TV appeal, a Mrs. Jones phoned in, giving her name, and get this, the name of her boyfriend, who drives a white convertible. Let me guess, Paul King. He was her pimp. And the car she drives? A red golf. With an outstanding speeding fine. Full registration and address on file. Right, circulate the details of the car, phone DCI after. Tell them we've got her. We're friends. And friends help each other no matter what. Even if that friend is a murderer. She told me that Paul had gone on the run, that he needed money, and would I sell the car for him. And you believed that? Why wouldn't I? We've been looking for that car for some time. I didn't know about the police officer who was killed. I don't believe you. She brought the car here, didn't she? Eventually, yes. The car was covered in blood. I didn't see it. I did. Listen, I've known Cathy for years, OK? The fact that she sleeps with men for money doesn't make her inhuman. The fact that she killed two men in cold blood does. It wasn't unreasonable to think that Paul had gone on the run. He was strictly small time. Suddenly, he comes into a load of gear, ups his profile. Well, that had to come from somewhere. He had to be treading on a few people's toes. What happened to that girl? Same as the money from the car. Cathy's using it to finance her escape. But she told you it was for Paul? Yeah. It wasn't until I found out from your colleague that Paul was dead I realized what I was involved in. 
I don't want to go to prison for the rest of my life. And I don't want Cathy to either. Where is she, Artie? She comes in here Friday, Saturday night, sells some gear, and then disappears. We could close this place down on that information alone. I know that. I'm trying to be honest here. Save your skin, Marley. You have CCTV in the toilets, right? Yeah, but the cameras are turned off. Convenient. Our clientele are used to being in front of the lens, in the media spotlight. They come here for the privacy. Fatida. And when she's not here, where is she? Police! Bedroom clear. Bathroom clear. Kitchen clear. Not what you'd expect. Go! She's gone. Oi, get him up. Still think you're something special, don't you? You can't touch me now, Malcolm. I wouldn't touch you with rubber gloves on. Did you come out here just to regale me with your wit? Or is there some other altruistic motive? <sighs> you were spotted at Coralov's. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. You and that scouse monkey. Remind me. Post nightclub in Spicer Lane. Kids damaging telephone boxes. That's the only call I remember on Spicer Lane. I'll damage you if I find out you've been withholding information. Terry Knowles was a valued member of this relief. He was a chancer. A wide boy. You read the wrong papers. I read you. You fancied him, didn't you? That is beneath contempt. Problem, Sarge? No. No problem. See you Friday, Des. He may be a puff, but he's a puff. doesn't know about this. Don't panic, Sarge. Three, three from six zero zero. Go ahead, Jim. Sarge, we're in position in the car park. Over. Yes, yes. She's not in there, and there's nothing. And if she is, we'll be heroes. Not with the murder squad, we won't. Nick and Derek Smith are the only two people to know what this bird looks like. They didn't even give Nick the chance to be on the team. All I'm saying is, make certain, don't do anything rash. Apart from anything else, if she is in there, she's dangerous. Now you're making me nervous. You don't have to do this, Nick. Yes, I do. Sandhill Police, can I help you? No, you'll want Barton Street, madam. I can get the operator to redirect... Oh, hang up. Reggie, are you all right? Oh, yeah. So you haven't seen her then since... No. Reg, have you got any idea where Sergeant Gilmore is? Oh, Sergeant, he's on a coin over the side of the ground. Well, still? Yeah, we said it was a delicate matter. Delicate? Well, I don't need to elaborate, do I, Sergeant? Well, when he returns to the land of the living, can you tell him he's wanted? Yeah, he did say it might take some time. Well, it's Inspector Monroe wants him, not me, so save the excuses till then. What's going on, Reg? Oh, nothing. It's not just a Sarge who's gone missing, though, is it? Look, we're working on something. We? Yes. <clears throat> ah. Look, Paul, uh, don't say nothing, mate. But we think we might know where Kathy Minigan is. Have you told MIT? Oh, well, no, that's the old point. They've been looking in the wrong place. See, she's been dealing at Coroner. Reg, you're withholding information from a murder inquiry. Yeah, but think about it. Nick's the only one who knows what she looks like. He's the only person who'd give a positive identification, and they won't let him anywhere near the investigation. Yeah, with good reason, because she's dangerous. She killed two people. Yeah, well, 
Des and Sergeant Gilmore have got it coming. Oh, that's what worries me. Well, that's all right. Sam and Jim are giving them back up. Oh, it just gets better. Jim? That's it. Three three from six zero zero. You receiving, Sarge? Loud and clear. We've got a red golf here. Registration Alpha one seven two, Alpha Oscar Sierra. That's it. Okay, Jim. Uh, wait ten minutes, then call the registration in. Received. This is it. Gov, we're all going for a bite to eat. Want to join us? Maybe later. Where are you going? That pizza and pasta place. Oh, yeah. Do you want me to wait for you? Uh, no, I'll catch you up. Vic, this, uh, Karolevs, what's it like? Well, it's an upmarket steakhouse. The list of names here is like the celebrity Big Brother. Yeah, it's the closest thing Sunny has got to West End Glitz. It's not the sort of place you'd expect to find a cop killer, though, is it? I don't know. Paul King, plus one other. Every Friday night for the last three months. Do you think that one other could be Cathy Milligan? The guy who runs the place said that Paul came in with various people. He might have been dealing there. Well, even so, Gov, it doesn't put us any closer to finding the woman, does it? But you've got to ask yourself, if Terry Knowles hadn't pulled her over, what would have happened next? See, why did she kill her boyfriend? And if he was dealing, where was all the coke? You think there's a third person? The man that sold the car. <laughs> It's paradise, isn't it? Why didn't you arrest this arty shanks? Well, because he manages the place. If he's not there, she won't show. And what's to stop him from tipping her off? Because he doesn't know what he's involved in. Oh, what? And you do? Sunhill Police, can I help you? I think we could be in trouble. What? Shanks has pulled a ciggy. But that doesn't mean she won't turn up, does it? Doesn't it? Darling! <laughs> Thought it was you. Remember me? I couldn't have been that pissed. Wanda. Wanda from Tate Clarkson and Bland. I think you're making a mistake, love. You're not in advertising? No, not tonight. Mm. Who's the boy? One of yours. Look, Wanda, do yourself a favour and wander over there, will you? Friend of yours, is she? Nine o'clock. No. There. Where? At the door. You sure? There's only one way to find out. Remember me? I think you've got the wrong person. Kathy, isn't it? Lucky guess. You were with Paul. How is he, by the way? Still being a shit. Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Nick. It's Nick Adams. How do you know Paul? Oh, you're kidding me. I used to be one of his biggest customers. Oh. In fact, I was hoping that I might bump into him. But you bumped into me instead. Yeah, and I'd never forget a pretty face. You do look familiar. I, th I think it was a, a party. Jobson's? Sally Jobson's? I have to tell you the truth, I gate crashed it, so I couldn't tell you whose party it was. Right. Uh, there's no chance of Paul turning up tonight, is there? Only I'm, um, right out. Downstairs bar, five minutes. Malt whiskey. Well, I'm not 
Sure. Did you see her? See her? I spoke to her. Are you still not sure? I want time, Des. Well, remember who you're dealing with? It should be down in five minutes. She wants some more whiskey. Look, if it is Look, it, don't... five minutes. Five minutes is all I need just to get some idea of what she's about. I've got to get this straight in my head. One more whiskey, please. Sierra Oscar from 600, receiving. Go ahead, Jim. Vehicle check, please. Yeah, go ahead. Alpha, 172 Alpha Oscar Sierra. That's it, that's the car, Red Golf. Yeah, Jim, you feet at all? Yes. Ask if the driver's with him. Is the driver there with you? Negative. Right, tell him to stay where they are. I just hope they know what they're doing. Bloody shanks. Shafted us. Maybe he's genuinely ill. What, on a Friday night? But Des, do me a favour, you're gonna have to give me some space, please. Nice in that. Yeah, sure. Can I get some more ice in this, please? Thank you. Your face is familiar. What did you say you were in? I didn't. IT? Computers? Communications, comms, networks, the old shebang. Good money. The government do well out of it. You have nice eyes. What's wrong? My mother warned me about women like you. Not gay, are you? I have real trouble with gay men. I just thought you could sort me out, that's all. That's just the kind of trouble I mean. Sorry, it's just I saw you with your friend earlier. Shaved head usually means... Well, in here, it's... Is he jealous? He looks the jealous type. He's just a friend. I'm straight. Talking of which I could do with a straight now. My car's out the back. Red Golf A Reg. 60 a gram. Still interested? Yeah. Target has just left Korolev's. Uh, heading for the car park. Blonde wearing beige jacket over black top. Yes, she is. Let's go, Jim. No. We've not been given a word. Sarge. We got eyeball. She's at the car. Sit tight. Repeat, sit tight. He's doing what? He wants five minutes alone with her. But she's a killer. We can give him five minutes. I didn't mean to come on to you. Paul wouldn't be too happy about it. I suppose not. It's all right. I'm not going to bite you. This is top quality gear. 
It always is. Funny. Get the impression you don't like me. You sure you're not swinging pink? I guess you're used to blank sign you up. Occupational hazard. <laughs> what drug dealer? I'm branching out. So if I was to ask you for a little bit of blow, you'd want me to be more specific? Sure. Biting wit. I like it. Is it important to you? What? The blokes like you. You get used to being treated a certain way, that's all. What, like a lady? <laughs> you can't know Paul that well. I smacked you about, did he? What do you care? What do you mean, did? Did? Past tense. You ever driven his car? What is this? A white Saab convertible. This is my car. You have driven it, haven't you? Is this shit what it's all about? Get go of me! He was my friend! You're hurting me! Terry! Terry Nog, remember that name? If you even bothered to read the newspaper! <laughs> ah. It was your phone number, your lousy phone number. He fancied you, you slag! 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 You slag! Calm down, you're not going anywhere. I'm arresting you for the murder of PC Dan Snow. Mr. Paul King, you don't have to say anything with a Mohammed defense. You do not mention when questioned something you later on in court. Anything you say may be given in evidence. If you had any information, you should have passed it on to us. And you would have reciprocated, would you? We were given a name, that's all. We didn't even know if it would check out. You knew all right. Craig? Jim and Sam spotted a car and called in the registration. How come these two were in civvies? Anti-drug initiative, sir. Oh, yeah, right. Gentlemen, the fact of the matter is we got a result. Well, thanks to these idiots. How very grown up. I don't think there's a case to be answered. You knew all about it, did you? You've had your explanation. It's the only explanation I'm going to get, right? Your governor seems happy enough. My governor can wipe his arse without smiling. <laughs> Danny, you knew what they were up to. Yeah, they were trying to find out who killed a mate. I don't believe this. It's been a very long night, gentlemen, and a very early morning for me. The matter is closed unless DCI Rafter or DI Gofton wish to make an official complaint. Do you? Good. Then my officers can go home and get a well-earned rest. You had a nice smile. I remember that. My mind wasn't... <coughs> Sorry. You want to take a powder for that? <laughs> Can we get back to the matter? Killing master? Paul was easy. He was such a bastard. It wasn't that he hit me. But he did. It was the mental torture. Paul was your pimp. The way he'd pass me around his friends and then pretend to love me. God. Of course, I fell for it at first. But as time went on and he started to manage more and more girls, he seemed to get a kick out of fixing me up with the worst people. Real scum. Always wanted stuff off the menu. But you were still sleeping with him? Yeah. So what changed? What do you mean? Well, what happened between you? Why did you decide to kill him? Ten kilos of coke. That's the area Paul wanted to move into. He fancied himself as Tony Montana. So it was a money thing? wasn't a money thing in the way you're thinking. I didn't kill him just because of the money. It was a ticket to ride, destination out of here. Me and Artie were going to Cyprus, open up a bar over there, Lord and Lady Muckrake. Artie was in on it? In on it. It was his idea. Like I said, 
Kaur was full of crap. Brought up on fairy tales of the craze and Jimmy Cagney films on the telly. Scarface was his favourite. No, that wasn't Cagney, it was Pacino. But it was made in the style of an homage. The original Scarface was Paul Mooney. White Heat was his favourite Cagney film. You said it was Artie's idea. Artie knew about the coke. Knew I'd had enough. Put the idea in my head. We'd had a drink. Had some Charlie. It was early afternoon. Nice, hot day. Paul liked to sweat. We were at it. And the gun was there. His gun? Yeah, his gun. When he was near, I had to place a pillow over his face, restrict his breathing. Supposed to intensify the pleasure. I blame the school he went to. He was near. The gun was near. The pillow was over his face. He'd shown me how to use it enough times. I twisted, moaned and groaned. Did what I've done a thousand times, only this time. Only this instance, this one occasion, I have all the power. Slipped off the safety and pushed the muzzle into the pillow. Kept pushing, pushing right where his mouth was and squeezed the trigger. After that, it was blind panic. The blood was all over me. I had to shower quick as I could. Got his case where I knew the coke was and loaded it into the boot. Had a line. The old paranoia was setting in. Forgot the gun. Not once, but twice. Silly cow. Still can't get over what a stupid bitch I was. Got the car keys and drove off. Later. After, Artie and I went back. Artie wouldn't come in. I needed the logbook and Paul's license so we could get rid of the car. It was parked up in a private slot under the Korolev. The gun was on the bed. But I still didn't pick it up. How dumb was that? Don't know why, maybe because of your bloke. The one that got in the way. The one with a nice smile. I didn't mean him any harm. The coke. It's great. Well, if you're happy, it's... But sometimes... The paranoia. When he was talking to me, chatting me up, I thought he knew that it was a delaying tactic. He couldn't fancy me. Not really. He was a nice guy. Way out of my league. He had to be delaying me for a reason. He had to know. He knew about the coke in the boot. He knew about Paul. I played along. But I knew it was a charade. A game. He hated me. I had this steel comb. Just... It would give me time. So you stabbed him? Yeah. Four times? <laughs> All right, Cathy, that's enough. Signed us. Maybe you got the plane, Gov. That's what I'd do. No, this is the way he's going. But what about customs? No, they're more interested in who's coming into the country than who's leaving it. Well, maybe you got an earlier train. He reserved two first class tickets on the internet. His flat might have been clean, but the hard drive on his computer wasn't. I'm going to check it over here. Excuse me. 
Ah, you still haven't forgiven us, eh? Let's just keep an eye out for Shank, shall we? Check the black guy out in the white T-shirt. Looks iffy. Looks like he's planning to get lost. He must have something to hide. And look, he's just turned up. Where? Hey! Drop it! Where do you think you're going? Arthur Shanks, I'm arresting you on suspicion of being an accessory in the murders of PC Terence Knowles and Mr. Paul King. You don't have to say anything, but it may have your defence if you do not mention when questioned something you'll later line in court. Anything you say may be given in evidence. It's a mistake. She was the silly bitch who murdered me. I'm on the way with your boyfriend as well. Not the kind of break you were hoping for, Artie. See you back at the station. Go. All this glass. Terry would have made a killing. Next on the bill. I'd like to do a pregnancy test to see if you're having a baby. But she can't be. She shouldn't even have a boyfriend. Sometimes you wish you could just have five minutes alone with her. Myself a freak of. That's what I think, sir.